for the vast majority of people, the LTS version of Ubuntu is the release that they use. They jump from one release to another, and they completely ignore the interim releases, which they consider more beta, less stable, if you will. And that's okay for most people. I think that that is probably the pop proper way to do it if you're using Ubuntu because of its stability and long-term support. But if you are a Linux nerd, the interim releases are actually the more interesting ones because it's usually the place where Canonical will test new features. Now, that isn't always the case. Sometimes the interim releases are kind of boring too, but usually there's at least one or two features that you can look forward to in an interim release that will at least catch some interest in the Linux community. So what we're going to do today is take a look at the next Ubuntu release, which is going to be 22.10. It is codenamed Kinetic Kudu. So Ubuntu has continued their tradition of picking names which are a little weird. At least they've picked two names that I can pronounce this time. So that's good right there, I suppose. So what can we look forward to in Ubuntu 22.10 Kinetic Kudu? Well, the first thing you can obviously expect are the traditional things. So you're going to get one of the more recent kernels. You're going to get GNOME 43, probably, in some form or fashion. Now, Ubuntu does this thing where they don't take the whole thing of GNOME and just put it in Ubuntu. They pick and choose. So you'll have some things that are GNOME 43. You'll have some things that have been updated to GNOME 42. Some things that are a little bit older than that, probably. It's more of a mismatch of the previous GNOME releases. It's not the whole kit and caboodle. That being said, they have been tightening that up a little bit in the last couple of releases, or at least the last released. So you probably will expect them to have a few more things of GNOME 43 included there as well, which is a good thing. Added on top of that, you'll also see the traditional updated applications that come along with any Ubuntu releases. So you'll get the most recent version of Firefox, which will, of course, be a snap. You'll get the most recent release of LibreOffice. And all of the GNOME applications will be updated in some form or fashion, whether or not that's to the 43rd version of those applications or something at least a little bit newer than the LTS. All of that can be expected of any Ubuntu interim release or even any Ubuntu LTS release. Those are always going to be the things that you can pretty much count on no matter what. So the question then becomes, what's going to be the feature that they're going to be releasing for this next release? And the answer to that question is one that we've been touting for what feels like three years, but has actually been like a year and a half. And that is the brand new Ubuntu installer. This should be, and note that I say should be, the release where we finally get to see the Ubuntu installer completely revamped in Flutter. So here are a few of the things that you should know if you haven't been paying attention to the new installer and its development over the last year and a half. The f one thing that is for sure going to be true is that it's not going to look significantly different than the installer that is there now. From what I've seen and the few times that I've used it, it looks mostly the same unless they've made some changes since the last time I've used it. And that's probably a good thing. They have people pretty well trained on the current look and feel of the installer. So you probably are asking, well, why are they doing it? Well, one thing is the Flutter development environment is better for the developers in terms of actually adding new features and making it kind of lighter than what they were using before, which is a good thing. Most of the changes that are being implemented are just going to be for the developers to do interesting things, hopefully in the future. I do know that the thing that you'll probably notice the most in terms of look and feel is going to be some animations. They have some animations there that will be a little bit different than what you'll see in the Ubuntu installer of yesteryear. There are a few questions that I still have, like when will ZFS finally make it to a first class citizen as a option? Because it's still, as far as I know, ex marked experimental. So that's something we might see in this future in terms of actually being included in the installer. I'm also not sure what the partition portion of the installer will look like. That's changed a couple times during this development, so I'm not sure what the final will actually look like, whether or not it will be much different than what it was before, or if it will be the same. So that will be interesting to find out as well. Other than that, we don't know much in terms of actual new features. And it would honestly be quite surprising if there was anything more than that that was super news-breaking, because, to be honest, there really hasn't been those types of features that are like super news breaking in quite a while. Now, another thing that we will expect 
or at least something that they've talked about before and we're pretty sure that they're going to do, and they might have even announced it officially, is that they're moving Ubuntu to Pipewire by default. So for most people, you probably won't even notice, but if you're a content creator, Pipewire is definitely something that you probably pay attention to if it's on your system, and it just means you're going to have to do some things a little bit differently if you're messing around with audio and stuff like that. So just know that that's probably going to happen in this next release. Now before we end this video, let's talk about a few important dates. So August 25th of this year, we'll see the feature freeze, meaning that they won't be adding any new features. By that point, we should know exactly what's going to be in the next release. On September 25th, the user interface freeze happens, meaning that they can't make any more tweaks to the theme or anything like that. So at that point, the ISO and stuff like that is going to be pretty much frozen in terms of features and look and feel. On the 26th of September, the beta is frozen, which means it is the last time that they'll have a chance to make changes to what is going to be inside of the beta. And on the 29th, the beta will come out. On the 6th, the kernel freeze happens. On the 13th is the final freeze along with a release candidate that will be released. And then on October 20th, Ubuntu 22.10 will be released. So those are kind of the dates that you need to keep in mind if this is something that you pay attention to. And I am one of those people. Now, personally, I'm more interested to see what some of the flavors do. So there is a bit of drama going on amongst the flavors where they're choosing to do some different things than the mainline branch does. So for example, some of them are allowing both snaps and flat packs to be included. Some of them are or are maybe not going to include pipe wire by default. So we'll see where those differences kind of pop up amongst the flavors, which kind of make this even more interesting because Ubuntu itself, like the mainline Ubuntu, doesn't see a lot of like humongous changes even between these in interim releases. It's the flavors where you'll get to see a lot more features. So like Kubuntu will have the most recent version of KDE Plasma included in it, which has a ton of new features. Ubuntu Mate will have plenty of new features to go along with it because they're always developing new stuff. Now things like Zubuntu, you won't expect to change that much because Zubuntu never changes its base on XFCE. You know, it's just, it's meant to be what XFC always has been. So it, the flavors are the things where I'm really looking forward to some interesting things going on. So we will probably make another video about some of the flavors as we get closer to the release and we know for sure what's going to be happening with them. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on Ubuntu 20.2.10, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey, those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all of these fine people. I'd like to thank everybody who supports me on Patreon and YouTube and just try to find the words to say how grateful I am to every single one of you who have supported me, not only now, but in the past. So thanks to everybody who supports me. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.